just setting up the display and the screen is too cluttered we can get rid of the phase display and the other thing we don't want is the Smith chart the crystal you see here is 6.475 megahertz so we'll just set this frequency range up to let's say 6.4 to 6.5 and you can see there's a very big change this is a single crystal and we'll zoom in a bit more and it's not really what you'd call a crystal filter type display there's a very sharp peak and a very sharp notch if you put this in the bandpass of a receiver it wouldn't be any good for SSB for CW it would be extremely narrow very narrow peak up here and then a very narrow notch a few kilohertz later on if you change the frequency just by a few hertz then the peak will be gone and the signal will be much weaker so tuning would be very difficult I'll just do a comparison and you've got a, just shorting out the crystal and it's a straight line put the crystal in circuit and it's back something else I'll do is I'll put another crystal in parallel and see if that changes what's displayed and it didn't seem to very much you've just seen what the passband looks like with a single crystal set up as a filter next we'll try two crystals again 6.475 megahertz it's in a ladder configuration and there's a 22 picofarad disc ceramic capacitor to ground this is about the simplest crystal filter you can get what you are seeing here is two crystals in series I haven't yet connected the ground therefore the disc ceramic capacitor is floating now we have some sort of bandpass type shape if we look at the peak that's minus 13 dB and up at 6.484 it's at minus 68 dB so a difference of around 55 dB if we have a look at where the peaks are this one's at 6.477 and the leftmost peak is at 6.472 so 5 kilohertz between the peaks with a rather deep trough which looks like around 20 dB so not a very good passband shape next I'll try a different capacitor value instead of 22 picofarad we'll go a bit higher in fact a lot higher 220 with 220 picofarad this is quite a good looking curve it's pretty much what you'd like a filter to look like just down here on the line because it's easy to read minus 20 so that's 7 dB down this side and our frequency here is 6.4722 if we go on here also at about the minus 20 point 6.4730 that is too narrow for an SSB receiver for CW it would be a little bit wider than you'd want but it would still be quite good for a homebrew receiver and definitely better than using an SSB receiver on CW so without having done any calculations we have quite a good bandpass characteristic if we go down the sides of the skirt remembering at the peak it's minus 13 dB we'll go down here uh, 6.469 so we're not that far off the peak and we're already at minus 47 so there's 30 decibels there and 
it goes even lower down the other side of the skirt. The skirt does fan out a bit. If you wanted a tighter curve, you'll need to add another crystal. That will pull the skirt in and give it a band pass that's more like the ideal. The main trade-off in a simple receiver is that the more crystals you add in a crystal filter, there will be a bit of attenuation, so you may need to add an extra IF amplifier stage to compensate for the extra loss. Let us try a different capacitor value. This is with our 150 picofarad capacitor, minus 13 dB here. This is about minus 20, and we're at 6.4722, so the same as we had before on the lower end. The top is a bit less even, but it is wider. And up here, 6.4377. So about one and a half kilohertz wide. Because the drop off on the skirts is not as sharp with a two crystal filter as with a three or four crystal filter, this would probably be tolerably good for an SSB receiver. There's another thing about this band pass, which although it's not your ideal flat top as per the textbook, it does have some advantages. Let's say that you're building an SSB receiver or SSB transceiver and generally with SSB it's a good idea to have a little bit of extra emphasis in the higher parts of the audio um, section, you know, around 2 or 3 kilohertz. It improves the readability of the signal. So what you might do is you might have the filter bandpass skewed to give that sort of sharp, punchy audio. Communications quality, not really armchair, rag chew type quality. This type of band pass would be almost ideal for that, provided you've got the carrier on this side. So you just set your carrier oscillator to about here, and with a receiver or spectrum analyzer or even one of these nano VNAs you may be able to align an SSB rig with this though I haven't actually tried it then you should get quite a good audio band pass now that would of course if the carrier was here that would give you a lower sideband signal which would be fine for three and a half or seven megahertz but if you needed an upper sideband signal and put the carrier up on the left side so that uh, your signal would be in this portion, then the shape of this isn't so good as you would have the peak at the lower part of the audio range and not at the upper part. But still, you can do some clever things. For instance, if you set this up to have a lower sideband signal, this is assuming a filter type SSB transceiver. Then if you're using a DDS VFO, you can arrange your mixing frequency to subtract this and that will invert the sideband provided your mixing frequency is above your carrier oscillator and crystal filter frequency, which since we're using crystals for 6.475 megahertz, and that's quite easy to do. In other words, if you wanted to use this type of crystal, 6.475 megahertz for a 28 megahertz transceiver, you've either got the option of your local oscillator being below around 21, 22 megahertz or above around 34, 35 megahertz. If you've got it above 34, 35 megahertz, then you're subtracting the signal, you're thus inverting its sideband, and you have the desired upper sideband on 28 megahertz. That is, of course, with the carrier around here, so that the signal coming out of the crystal filter is a lower sideband signal. If you're using this arrangement on 80 meters, 3.5 megahertz, where you want a lower sideband signal, then your local oscillator would have to be around three megahertz, given that this is 
6.475 megahertz coming from this crystal filter actually a little bit below 3 megahertz around 2.9 2.8 2.7 in that region and that will give you a difference of 3.5 megahertz so suitable for 80 meters if you want a circuit diagram of this crystal filter here it is our next filter uses three crystals and two disc ceramic capacitors both 100 picofarad this is it with three crystals the main problem is here where there's a bit of a dip however the skirt is steeper which is good and the bandwidth across here is about 2.2 kilohertz so that would be satisfactory for an SSB transceiver however my comments before about the carrier oscillator being here so that you'd get a lower sideband signal still apply given you've got that dip here if you could fiddle with the capacitor values a bit then you'd be able to smooth it across the top and you'd get a better filter band pass but even as is something like this would be fine for a homebrew SSB receiver and if you wanted to narrow the bandwidth like if you're using this on CW then you'd increase the value of the capacitors here's our final test again three crystals this time 12 megahertz I've kept the capacitors the same at 100 picofarad and this is what it looks like not too bad this is at minus 16 down here is minus 22 11.996.45 and here it's 11. Point near enough to 12 so this is around 3 or 4 kilohertz wide up here and it drops off a little bit gentler than the previous one we had but something like this would be vaguely okay for an SSB receiver especially if you had your carrier here so it emphasized the highs with this used as a lower sideband filter